I've got to admit, sequels are my least favorite kind of game to review, especially when they barely improve on the original at all. What are we supposed to talk about? I know what you mean. I didn't really enjoy the first Ravenloft anyway, and there are plenty of things I would have rather done than play this one. I'm happy to report, though, that this is simply a better game than its predecessor, and it actually had me hooked for a while. Nobody can generate more revenue out of one game interface than SSI. Stone Prophet is the third game to use their new 3D real-time adventure system. It's not exactly the same system used in the previous two, though. A few minor adjustments have been made to allow for flying during combat and some other things. Movement can be a pain, especially if you're used to Doom like I am. The left and right arrows on the keyboard are assigned to strafe automatically. To actually turn your body, you have to use the diagonal north keys 7 and 9. Ick. Before you move anywhere, though, you should know where you're going. In Stone Prophet, you must stop the spirit of the evil former pharaoh Antipat, who enlisted the services of the sun god Ra to slay those who opposed him. He's back with a vengeance, and getting rid of him won't be easy. Stone Prophet throws monsters and puzzles at you from all directions, so by the time you get to Octopot, you'll be a seasoned veteran of the Ravenloft world. Maybe I should say, if you get to it. You don't get a whole lot to work with. Stone Prophet starts you off with two characters of level 5 or thereabouts. The character creation system is fun to use and incorporates a lot of animation and speech, if you have the patience. Like other recent SSI RPGs, Stone Prophet lets you edit character attributes to your heart's content. I can't really make up my mind whether this is cheating or not, seeing as that even my Superman characters didn't last me too long. The portraits are beautifully drawn and you're bound to find a face that suits your character. Harakir, the real name of the Ravenloft world, is mostly desert. This is your typical walking outside screenshot. Unlike Strahd's possession, which annoyed the hell out of me with its subpar, dark, pixelated graphics, Stone Prophet's graphics are nice and colorful, especially in the daytime. Yeah, they do seem nicer. In fact, the artwork is pretty impressive throughout the game. Stone Prophet uses a 320 by 400 graphics engine, which puts twice as many pixels on the screen and thus allows for much more detail. Nice touch. This here is a vulture, which will eat your head unless you swing at him repeatedly. Like the rest of the game, combat is real time. Melee combat is pretty simple. You just click on a weapon icon over and over. Magic is a little tougher because it involves the use of your spellbook, but it's definitely easier than it was in the first Ravenloft game. The new spell management system is another nice touch. I think my biggest complaint about the first Ravenloft was the inventory system. It looked pretty cool, but required too much button clicking. No visible changes have been made to the system, unfortunately. Some of the items are still unrecognizable, and you still need to use both mouse buttons. Another ick. There are some other neat innovations in the Ravenloft engine worth mentioning, though I wonder if they have any practical use. The full screen dialogue system is laid out nicely, and gives you the option of printing your conversation. Why? Anyone? Anyone? There's also the auto map, which is navigated via a button bar so complex that it makes my all-in-one remote control look simple. You can print the map, but you can also pop any map onto the screen at any time. Save your printers for book reports. I think that covers it. I hope we've actually said something during these past few minutes. Here's the bottom line, folks. Stone Prophet is basically another SSI RPG. Like most SSI RPGs, it's above average in most respects. One or two large flaws keep it from being a superb game so you will or won't like it depending on how well you can overlook those flaws. We'll probably keep playing it, and if you've gotten this far into the review, you should probably try it out too.